Hello class. In the last segment we looked at one variable and two variable statistics. In this lesson we're going to look at um, just two variable statistics and how to use scatter plots to identify relationships. So let's take a look at the first example. Example one, a steel factory wants to reduce its carbon dioxide emissions. By the year 2025, the factory's goal is to emit less than 40 tons per year. What we're going to do first is we're going to plot the data. Um, but before we do that, we should consider what type of data needs to go on the horizontal and vertical axes. Well, in the horizontal axis, we always need to have our independent variable. And in this case, the independent variable will be the year. The vertical axis needs to have our dependent variable. And in, the, in this example, the dependent variable will be the carbon dioxide emissions in tons. Okay, um, I'd like you to pause the video um, and you are going to plot your ear on the x-axis and your CO2 emissions in tons on the y-axis. Um, actually, before you do that, let me just maybe get you started on a suitable scale before you pause the video, I mean. So why don't we put 2014 here, um, and then we'll go up. That would be 2015, and then I'm going to label the second one as 2016, and continue writing down the years. And then a suitable scale for this would be to go up by 20, so 20, 40, and so on. Okay. So please pause the video now and complete the scatter plot. And then hit resume when you're ready. Now, when you have completed your graph, it should look like this. Okay, so I'll leave that up for a sec and we'll talk about um, the next question. Now, when you graph this, you can see that these points, or the spread, the vertical distance between these points, are decreasing over time. So if you were to draw a curve of best fit, you can see that this starts leveling out like this. So in question B, question B is asking to describe the relationship between the carbon di dioxide emissions and will a factory reach its goal. Here's the goal. This is 40 tons. So in 2025, which would be slightly off the graph, is it going to reach the goal? And no, it doesn't look like it's going to reach the goal. So let's write this down. Okay, so over time, CO2, or carbon dioxide emissions, are decreasing. The rate of decrease is slowing down. Over time, the factory will not reach its goal Um, sorry, the factory will not reach its goal at this rate. C, would it be reasonable to assume cause and effect in this example? Well, time alone is not going to cause the decrease in, in emissions. Um, however, the factory might be using new technology or maybe has decreased production, and maybe that's why carbon dioxide emissions are decreasing. So the cause is not time passing. Um, which is resulting in the emissions. So in that case, it would not be reasonable. So time on its own is not causing emissions to decrease.
perhaps. New technology. or a decrease in production is the cause. Example two, a team of high school students are speaking to elementary school students about the health problems that arise from smoking. Data on the number of hours spent by high school students and the corresponding number of smokers in an elementary school are summarized in this table. So here, this table shows the speaking time in hours um, and the number of smokers and that would be for each school so each of these data points would represent a particular elementary school. Um, we're asked to make a conjecture about the relationship between speaking time and the number of smokers. So again here I'd like you to pause the video um, and think about a conjecture. If you're not sure what a conjecture is, a conjecture is a hypothesis. What do you think will happen? What do you think the relationship between the variables might be? So, the more time high school students spend speaking about the dangers of smoking, we would expect probably the fewer the smokers. Now it is possible that you did not think this would have an effect, so perhaps your conjecture would be that the number of um, hours that high school students are spent speaking about the dangers or the health effects of smoking will not have an effect on the number of smokers. This is fine. So you, in statistics, we often prove or disprove our conjectures. Um, the next question is for B. We want to plot the data on the scatter plot. So again, um, I will help you with a scale to speed things up a little bit for you. So we'll put a little break in the graph here and we'll make this um, 20 and then 30, 40, 50, and so on. And this is the speaking time in hours, okay? Because that's our independent variable, it needs to go on our horizontal axis. And then on our vertical axis, it will be the number of smokers in a school, in an elementary school, more specifically. So in this scale, a suitable um, sorry, for this axis, a suitable scale would be to go up by fives. So each of these would be five, ten, and so on. Okay, so proceed with your scale um, and then go ahead and graph it. Once you've done that, you can resume the video. So when you have graphed your results, or the results of the study, um, you can see that it does seem to, or the number of speaking times as that increases, we can see that the number of smokers is decreasing. This is an example of negative correlation, which I'm going to talk about in a little while. Um, and your graph should look something like that. Would it be reasonable to assume cause and effect? Are there other factors to consider? I think it would be reasonable to assume cause and effect for this data. So after, especially after looking at the data, let me show you the scatter plot again. So when we, we may not have thought that there is cause and effect before, but definitely when we see this downward trend, it looks like, well, there could be cause and effect. So let's write that down. So after looking at the data or looking at the graph, it seems reasonable that the greater the time high school students spend speaking 
about the dangers of smoking. The fewer the elementary school smokers. Okay, um, for our next part, um, we're going to talk about what co positive correlation and negative correlation would be. So correlation is positive when the values increase together. So on a scatter plot, you would see that when the points go up to the right. Correlation is negative when one value decreases as the other increases. So on a scatter plot, that looks what it looks like is when the points go down to the right or on the right. Um, so we can see these different examples of correlation. Now these numbers on the bottom are correlation coefficient, which I will talk to you about um, in a later lesson. So if our graph lined up perfectly in a straight line, that would be an example of or sorry, perfect positive correlation. Um, if they clustered very closely to a line, we'd have high positive co correlation. If it's roughly linear, we'd have low positive correlation. This shows no correlation because the points are random. Um, low negative correlation, high negative correlation, and perfect negative correlation because they line up perfectly in a line. Example three. A New Zealand study investigated the prevalence of mosquito larvae at different water temperatures. The results are shown in the table and in the graph. Describe any relationship between the variables. Well, I graphed this ahead of time for you using Desmos. And um, take a look at what's happening in the graph here. So in this section here, which shows the mean water temperature, and here's the mean lar larva density per liter, we can see that the points are going up fairly steadily. We can see that there's positive correlation in this section. I'll call this section A. Section A has this positive correlation. Um, but then it reaches a certain temperature and then we've got this section B here which shows negative correlation. There's negative correlation in this section. So it says describe any relationship between the variables. So in this one, you might say that the density of mosquito larva increases until about 16.3 degrees, or maybe you said a different number, okay? Um, then after, about 17 degrees Celsius. The density of that mosquito larva is decreasing. Considering cause and effect. State whether each claim is reasonable. Okay, so again, I want you to read through the examples um, and pause the video. I'm trying to see if I can fix that. This is this video is not perfect. Just bear with me. I'll try to make the next one better. All right. So we want to state whether each claim is reasonable. The first claim is that a scientific study showed a negative correlation between aerobic exercise and blood pressure. It claimed that the increase in aerobic activity was the cause of the decrease in blood pressure. Would that be reasonable or unreasonable? Well, this is reasonable. It's reasonable because in an increase in aerobic activity strengthens the heart.
and a stronger heart would result in a decrease in blood pressure because the heart does not have to work as hard to pump out the blood. B. Jen discovered a positive correlation between gas prices and average monthly temperature. She concluded that temperature determines the price of gas. So let's think about this for a sec. So our average monthly temperature um, would tends to get higher in the summer months, um, but is it the temperature which is causing the price of gas to go up, or are there other factors that are being considered? Um, this is this would be unreasonable. It's not just the temperature. There are, or it's not the temperature at all. It's other factors. So even though we do see higher gas prices often in the summer, it's because a lot of people are traveling on vacation and they feel that they would make more money probably. Um, so there are many factors to consider with gas prices. Look at the lower gas prices now that does not have to do with the warmer temperatures. Okay. Also OPEC sets oil prices. C. Since the 1950s, the concentration of carbon dioxide has been increasing. Com crime rates in many countries have also been increasing. Sam concludes that more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere causes people to commit crimes. That is also unreasonable. Okay, the two variables are not related. Um, so here's a warning for you. Correlation does not necessarily mean causation. Just because there is a strong correlation between data, so that means maybe you've got a graph that looks like this or this, or maybe even it's low correlation, it does not mean that one set of data is causing the effect that is occurring in the other data set. Okay, so be careful with this. So just because your graph might show um, correlation, it does not mean that one variable is causing the result in the other variable. This is extremely important in statistics and this is a way that a lot of people misuse statistics by not following that rule.